بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أن أبي أمارة البراء بن عاذب رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا فلان إذا أتيت إلى فراشك فقل اللهم أسلمت نفسي إليك ووجهت وجهي إليك وفوضت أمري إليك وألجأت ظهري إليك رغبة ورحبة إليك لا ملجأ ولا منجأ منك إلا إليك آمنت بكتابك الذي أنزلت ونبيك الذي أرسلت فإنك إن مت من ليلتك مت على الفترة وإن أصبحت أصبت خيرا متفق عليه وفي رواية في الصحيحين عن البراء قال قال لي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أتيت مضجعك فتوضأ وضوءك للصلاة ثم اتجع على شقق الأيمن وقل وذكر نحوه ثم قال واجعلهن آخر ما تقول Abu Umara al-Bara ibn Adib radiyallahu anhu reports that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said O so and so, when you retire to your bed, say, O oh Allah, I submit myself to you and I have turned my face to you. I have entrusted my affairs to you and taken shelter with you out of desire for you and fear of you. There is no shelter, no rescue from you except with you. I have believed in your book which you have sent down and your prophet whom you sent. If you die during the night, you will die on the natural submission of Islam and if you are still alive in the morning, your morning will be good. This hadith is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. In another narration is mentioned that Al-Bara radiallahu anhu says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you go to bed, do wudu as you would for prayer and then lie on your right side and say, he then mentioned at the end of this same hadith, make it the last thing that you say. At-tawakkul means to put one's trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this hadith which we have just mentioned talks about putting one's trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawakkul consists of knowledge, adoption and practice. Knowledge is its source and practice is its fruit. At-tawakkul means to put one's trust in Allah meaning making someone a proxy. When someone authorizes another person to work for them then they become a proxy on their behalf. This is called tawkil. When tawakkul is done, then he's making an authorized person in charge of his affairs because he has no fear that he has any disabilities or flaws, so he puts complete faith and trust in him. Let's look at an example of one who authorizes another to resolve a dispute. If one is falsely accused of having committed an act and authorized another person to refute the accusation, the authorizer should have complete conviction that the authorized person meets the following four conditions. He has extreme guidance, extreme power, extreme eloquence and extreme tenderness. As to extreme guidance, this is essential because it enables the authorized one to detect any trick or loophole. As to extreme power, this prompts him to declare the truth publicly without shyness, cowardice or fear. For he may uncover a fault by shyness, cowardice or fear, prevent him from declaring it. As to extreme eloquence, this enables him to translate what the heart has inferred and deduced without any shyness, cowardice or fear. For not everyone is able to declare the dilemma of fraud. As to extreme tenderness, this enables him to exert the due effort in this concern. For more ability does not mean more effort if one does not care about the subject. If the authorizer doubts the presence of any four of these conditions, or just one of them, he will not feel calm or tranquil about the authorized one. Rather, he will remain restless and disheartened, searching for any means to compensate for the authorized one's deficit, to overcome his accuser's argument. Confidence in the abilities of the authorized one's proportionality matches the authorizer's conviction about him. Therefore, we need to place full yaqeen and tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he is the one alone who has these attributes and qualities that we can fully put trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From this hadith, we learn that we need to put full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reading this dua is one of the ways that one can do this. This dua emphasizes on beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all situations, renewing one's pledge with Allah every evening and reaffirming one's submission and belief in Allah verbally and physically. And one also ends up concluding his evening with the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which indicates in another hadith towards one dying with iman and gaining entry into paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to have full reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and place complete trust in Him in all our affairs so that when we leave this world, Allah is happy with us.